first of all, for anybody who, who Joel Thierston, who is, uh, used to be the head of Connections, um, was supposed to be uh, co-collaborating with me on this briefing. He ended up not being able to come, so those who you came to see Joel, sorry, you're out, you're out a lot because he, he's not here. Um, but what I, but the focus of this really is is about helping to you know look at OER and one specific slice of OER in terms of how we as a, as a network of schools, mission driven schools are really going to use OER um, as an opportunity to, to further our mission as well as, as the concepts behind OER. So um, this is a the, uh, and, and so this is about the, the work of the Jesuit Virtual Learning Academy and how it supports the network of secondary schools across across the, the country and around the world. Um, uh, one of our, uh, uh, the, for those of you who don't know anything about the Society of Jesus, the, the leader of the society is, is, is the superior general, okay? And so um, Pedro Rupe was one of the former societies, and, and he talked about education, he talked about our schools, which is, which is a, a pretty significant network of schools, and he talked about it in terms of, of you know, if our schools perform as they should, they will live in a continual, con continual tension between the old and the new, the comfortable past, and the uneasy present. And the reason that I really like that quote um, is because he said it back in 1967, right? Um, and, and when you look at those words, you think to yourself, wow, that's really applicable to what's happening today, right? And so I, I think if, if we as educators are, are really serious about, uh, 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 about what we do, we need to really, really think about it in terms of how are we pushing the envelope? And I think Joshua spoke to that earlier this morning about that as well. Um, so what I want to do real quickly is, is talk a little bit about the, the, my personal view on the context of where we're at today from a decision maker's perspective and how things, on, on, on how things are happening in our schools, and our network of schools, might be different from, from your experiences. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the, the work of the Judgment Virtual Learning Academy and how we're using OER, okay? So um, in terms of decision making and the perspective, and, and again, how I see it, um, decision makers in our schools, generally speaking, at the presidential level, they're not um, educators, they're not uh, technology folks. Um, and the way they see things is it's really in terms of, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a world that's in flux, it's education that's in flux, funding mechanisms are in flux, and technology um, is continually changing and at, at a pace that makes it hard for non-technology people to really grasp what's going on in the space, right? And so what does that, what does that lead to, right? I mean, it, it, it leads to this, right? It leads to gridlock. And so basically, in our schools, again, speaking from my particular context, in our schools, in our network of Jesuit schools, there's a lot of people not doing a whole lot, okay? Really struggling to figure out what's next. How do we engage, right? Not, and, and the good thing is, is our schools, generally speaking, in the communities in which they exist, are leaders in, considered to be leaders in their communities in terms of the educational, in the, the education that their students receive. But in terms of really moving forward, we're not really pushing very hard because we just really don't know what to do, okay? Um, so, um, turn just a tiny bit to get a little more closely aligned to OER now, right? This is uh, obviously from UNESCO. Um, OERs will not be able to help countries reach their educational goals unless awareness of their power and potential can rapidly be expanded beyond the communities of interest that they are already attracted, right? This is, this is why we're all here, right, in terms of trying to figure out how to, how to make this go. And then really there's two approaches, right, and you can think about, well, there's three approaches. Um, but so you could take this from a top-down perspective, right, and really go and talk to those leaders that I was just talking about in terms of that are really struggling with what's going on in the space right now and having a hard time understanding exactly how to go about making sense of education in a broader sense and how it fits in, right, and understanding funding models and so forth. Um, um, so you get the top-down approach, and, and generally speaking with top-down approaches, if it, with, with the right direction, what do you get? You get compliance, right? Okay, so you can make that happen. You can get compliance. Then you got the bottom up, right? You, you where you know it's a it's a groundswell. We try and get the teachers attached, and we do all we can to really help those people on the bottom it get introduced to OER, get those get those uh, get those systems and structures. But it's a, it's a one man. It's you know it's, it's getting grabbing that person and grabbing that person. Hard work, right? Um, at that level, though, you get buy-in. 
right? And that's really probably more important to this particular system than the top-down approach. Somewhere in between is hopefully what we're trying to do in terms of creating an ecosystem that helps support our network in terms of what we are, okay? So that's hopefully what, what the system and structure that we're putting in place is. Um, starting most importantly with our teachers, okay? Because we're going to start more in the bottom up, but with an ecosystem that includes administrators, okay, so they can see what's happening in this space, all right? Um, but what do we know about teachers? We know that they're busy, right? We know that they're busy people. Um, at the secondary level, there's a lot that's on their plates where they're being asked to coach, they're being asked to do all sorts of other things. You know, how do you get teachers out of their foxholes, right? Hard to do, okay? So that's something to consider. We talked about barriers yesterday. I don't know if, it, for those of you that were in the, uh, uh, Steve uh, Hargan did a, did a presentation. We talked a little bit about barriers. And there's a lot of barriers attached to OER and, 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 and these types of things, not the least of which is the fact that it's really not free. Okay, it's not free for teachers. Okay, uh, because there's, a, there's a, a tremendous investment of time attached to OER, both in terms of, of use and selection, um, as well as production, okay? And so that's as important, at least to the secondary teachers I know, that's as important as anything else to them, okay? So, so it's not free, particularly when a publisher can come along and drop in your lap a whole series of resources that you can just pick and go right into a classroom and use, right? So what we're really asking to do is just to fundamentally think about the ways in which they, they, they can... Uh, you know, they need to consider how to change their perspective on, on, these, on these items. The other thing that's happened, as, and, and I think you probably all know it as well, is, is, is that technology 20 years ago is different than technology today. And for teachers, where 20 years ago there wasn't a whole lot of tools and there wasn't even a whole lot of content available online, now there's too much, right? It's almost a disincentive for teachers to engage in the use of technology because it takes, takes too long to find the right tools and to find the right the the, the um, right resources to, to to use in your traditional classrooms, okay. So that's that's you know those are the issues as I see them, okay. Um, later today, there's going to be a whole thing on cognitive surplus, right? We're going to spend the whole afternoon. One of the sessions this afternoon, the whole thing is about cognitive surplus, and I'm a huge fan of Clay Shirky, and you're going to see his name a couple of times in the presentation, because what Clay Shirky talks about as it relates to cognitive surplus is the need to be effective in this space is the need to build a culture of generosity. Okay? That's where I think we win as a network of Jesuit secondary schools. That's why I think a mission-based approach, whether you're talking to Jesuits or anything else, if you can connect to mission in a real meaningful way, you have an opportunity to use this culture of generosity as a way of moving OER forward. Okay? So, uh, a little bit about the Jesuit Virtual Learning Academy. Um, we found it in 2008, um, and the idea is just really to harness the collaborative capacity of the network of Jesuit secondary schools. Okay? Um, talk a little bit about that. We do three things, coursework for students, a professional development, and then, and then what's next is really this building of this collaborative technology infrastructure. Okay? Um, I want to talk a little bit about the network just to give you a sense of it. Okay? We're talking about, right now, the Jesuit Virtual Learning Academy. We primarily focus on our schools here in the United States. There's 59 Jesuit secondary schools serving about 50,000 students, okay? This is the worldwide network. 700 schools, okay? This is the network of Jesuit universities, 200, okay? It's a large network. We ha and the neat thing about it is that it's not just about the numbers, okay? It's really, we share something that's that's palpable. If you've ever been on a Jesuit university or Jesuit secondary school campus, it's, it's it, the, 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 the sense of mission is palpable, okay? We share a history 450 years. Mission, vision, and values are the same. You can walk onto any campus and hear the same language being taught. Um, men for others, men and women for others. Uh, talked about the graduate and graduation. All sorts of common lingo that makes our school special and unique, right? In an instructional pe pedagogy that is unique to Jesuit secondary schools. We share a spirituality, a common spirituality. Um, we have a corporate structure that is built around regions and around and, and around and organized 
um, uh, uh, around apostolates like uh, secondary education, um, uh, um, university work, um, ju uh, the Jesuit refugee services, and so forth. Um, and then, most importantly, there's a deep collegial respect among our network of teachers. They like to be with each other, okay? They like hearing what's happening on the other school's campuses. Even though each of our schools literally is its own independent school, they're tied together by this, and it's real. I mean, it's felt. And I think that's really what we're trying to take advantage of, okay? So, what's our approach to OER? So how, do we, how are we going to talk about it? How are we going to engage um, our schools in it? And how are we going to support it, okay, in, in, in our network of schools, okay? Um, how are we going to talk about it? And it's appeal to mission, and it's an appeal to our history. Uh, for those of you who don't know a lot about the Society of Jesus, early on they were pioneers, right? They sent the, the Marquette, even here in the United States, you can think about Marquette and some of, the, and some of those, were, those were Jesuits, right? So uh, Jesuit educators, uh, the, the appeal to being a pioneer, the, the appeal to collaborators in mission, and lastly that concept of servant leader, which is really embedded directly into our mission of service, okay? Service to others, it's foundational in our work, okay? So we can appeal to each of these areas in a real meaningful way and talk about OER as it relates to what it is we do, okay? Um, and so what we're really working to do is to talk about OER as a humble gift, okay? Um, and when we talk about it in that perspective, because I think, you know, some people every once in a while you kind of get in that discussion about, um, you know, going back to our network of schools, what we really have in our network, you have, uh, we, you know, here in the United States and then even abroad, we have, um, of the 700 schools, half of them are, are traditional college prep, kind of upper crust schools, you know, really well, well healed schools, and the other half are mission-based schools, okay? And so what you could view this as, as, oh, I'm here to help you, right? That's really not what we're talking about here. We're talking about being able to develop and to use and to use our network to distribute um, gifts, right, and to share in this. And and once and there's two sides of it, right? There's the giver, and then there is there is the receiver. There's the gratitude that wants you that makes you want to give back, right? And so that's really what we're talking about here, because as we give back, we add deeper context particularly when you're talking about our, our worldwide network and the ability to, to gain perspective from others outside of your particular region um, by using um, our network. David Wiley talked about uh, knowledge can be given without being given away, right? We talk about it as a spirit of generosity compelled by love. Two presentations in a row where the word love came up, right? So. Uh, Mother Teresa, um, you can do something I can't do. I can do something you can't do together. Let us do something beautiful for God. Okay? Um, next, innovations. Uh, you know, another Clay Shirky piece about innovation. And really, he talks about, you know, from a technology perspective, any innovation, it doesn't become a game changer until basically everybody's using it, right? It's kind of the 80% rule, right? Um, and so really what, what I want to do now is to show you the technology infrastructure pieces that we're deploying, um, and you're going to go, wow, there's nothing special about that. That's the point, right? Our teachers are comfortable with the technologies we're going to be introducing, okay? So, um, the three pieces of technology that we're using, uh, you're probably all familiar with connections, and particularly speaking, what we're inter interested in there is the lenses. Okay, so we've developed a lens program within Connections. Moodle is what we use to deliver our coursework, and it's also what we use to deliver our programs for faculty. So any, anything that we're really, where we're connecting kids, but also when we're doing professional development. But tying it all together, that piece at the top is a tool called Kinenza, and that um, is a closed system Facebook, for lack of a better way of talking about it, okay? This here is an artificial structure that's being imposed on the, on the system itself. Okay, and it's introduced in Canenza, and what it is is an Academy of Excellence infrastructure that, that builds academies within this around arts and letters, faith and philosophy, science, technology, engineering, math, and world studies. People have a home, right? It's, it's your professional learning communities, okay? 
It's our way of being able to connect common people around common issues. All right? So, with that, what I want to do is to sh just to take you real quick to it. If I can see what I'm doing. So here it is. I mean, there's not a whole lot to it, really. It's, you know, it's pretty simple. It's, it's Facebooky, right? So what we have is an opportunity to, to uh, push out various content pieces. We've got um, the, the things that people find or, that are important about this. This is actually not deployed yet. We've introduced it to a, a series of schools. But what this, ena what this enables us to do is, is to connect people to movements like OER, which I'll show you how we're doing that, but also it gives us an opportunity to build on mission, right, and to really help people um, to gather around what makes us special, okay? So we have the opportunity um, to, you know, you, you do the three-minute retreat. We have opportunities for folks to do, um, you know, to, to do book retreats um, on, spirit, on the spiritual formation pieces, all sorts of things that really speak to our mission but then also obviously connect people around what, what their primary um, work is, and that's educating young people, okay? So what you have here is, um, um, you know, groups around, uh, around the specific disciplines that we talked about earlier. Um, you have a uh, forum area, um, again, around, around those specific areas. You've got the, the capacity to do events, groups, and so forth. But what I want to do is just to show you this resource page because this resource page is really where we're talking about giving people, giving teachers an opportunity to start engaging technology in a meaningful way, finding, giving them resources that they can start with, okay? And so you can see there's four general categories um, that, um, that, that, that we have in place. These aren't, you know, the end all, the be all, but it, again, it's a starting point for, for folks. Down here under this, under this tool here, is a series of free or low cost tools that people can use to get the game of technology. And so it's things, it's things like VoiceThread and, and um, Skype, basically introducing teachers to easy tools, okay? Um, and, and, and then building professional development programs around them, okay? But this finding learning content piece, what I wanted to do is just to click on this to show you how we're really um, using this piece to to move our engagement in OER, um, as well as to introduce other repositories to folks, okay? Um, so within this structure here, you're gonna see, um, you know, our lens program. So a, a link directed to our lenses on CNX, okay? And also, so it, it takes people directly to that, but on top of it, down here below, our little screencasts and so forth that talk about why CNX, how to use CNX, um, how to use our lenses, how to be a part of the community, okay? And so it's kind of an introductory piece to it as well, okay? So it's, it's not just dumping people in there, but it's helping them understand how to use it, okay? Um, and I could take you through more of it, but I think you probably get the picture as to what we're trying to accomplish in using this. Because what I want to do is, is to talk about um, this next piece, which is about, uh, it's, Josh, Josh hit on the nail on the head when he talked about access, not, uh, you know, it's, it's not about access, really, it's, a, it's about, you know, how, it's about engagement, right? So it's, it's, what we, what we're trying to do in this system is to give people an opportunity to do something. Okay? It's another Clay Shirky piece where he talked about, you know, you can get all the pieces in place, but then what, right? And, and, and it's, you got to just start doing stuff and see what happens, okay? Um, so, uh, um, <coughs> here we go. Who, anybody know this? Remember this football game? 30 years ago? Anybody know why this is important? This was a football game. You, you'll remember it once, once I can tell you what it is. It's a football game that um, uh, had no announcers. Televised football game, they went without any announcers. And it was a disaster, right? Um, so they tried it. And the guy who tried it was a guy named Don Olmeyer, okay? And Don Olmeyer was the producer of the first Monday Night Football game, produced three Olympics, has 16 Emmys, and is in the Broadcasting Hall of Fame. 
He took a big chance here, went down in absolute flames, right? And in fact, it's so bad, this is what Brian Gumbel said before the game started, okay, on national television. We were just moments away from the kickoff of today's Jets, Dolphins game, and I telecast it figures to be different. The fact that we're trying something different, and there, too, has been greeted with almost every kind of reaction from good-natured humor to applause to some surprising anger. Right? I think that's really what we're, that's what we're up against, right? There, no matter what we try, if we have to risk. And so what we're trying to do within our structure is just to tell people it's okay to try something. Okay? We're going to support you. And that's the piece I'm going to talk about next, is how do we support our people? How do we support people who are interested in helping? Okay? Um, so the people part of it is, you know, I talked again about, uh, about that infrastructure, that artificial infrastructure, the Academy of Excellence infrastructure. What we have actually done is we have teachers in our network that are employed part-time by the Jesuit Virtual Learning Academy whose only job is to support those, those areas, okay? And so it's, it's, it's not just saying, here, this is an open space for you, go after it, right? It's actually having people attached to it who are going to start connecting people and start connecting ideas and saying, hey, you're really good at this. I need your help. And I want to attach you to this guy over here at this other school because he's really good at it too. And what we're going to end up with is something really special, okay? We need people to do that. People love to be invited. People love to be recognized, right, for their talents. That's what the purpose of the people is, right? And so that's, the, that's what we're doing to support it, okay? And so right out of the gate, one of the things we're doing within that structure, one textbook, one online textbook, we're going to get our network viewed or vetted, okay? It's a project, but it's a simple project. We can engage people in, in a small way that gives them an opportunity to start working towards something greater. And at the same time, if you notice that community that we built is not just for teachers, there's, there's administrative pieces attached to it too. So now the administrators see what's happening. They see the, the vetted material coming in and they get to, to start understanding and appreciating how OER works, right? And now, while it's a bubbling up, it's also a top down, okay? The second piece is really about program and how we, and how we actually use program to support this network. And it really comes down to professional development people, right? We have to help teachers understand the beast, right? And so what we've done is created what we think is, is a really solid professional development um, rubric, okay? And, and it focuses around a number of things, and you can see how it plays out from left to right in terms of what you're really trying to accomplish. Thank you. Um, and so... Um, you know, on the left is really introducing ideas and concepts to people, and obviously we can do that all day long, right? Um, webinars and all those types of things, you give people, you can demonstrate how things work, right? And that's all good and fun. Until you really start making your way over here, though, it really isn't a game changer, okay? We've all been to conferences, we've all had experiences and professional development experiences where you walk away going, wow, that was absolutely fantastic. You get back to school and nothing changes. You get thrown back into your day-to-day, -day and nothing changes. That's one of the beautiful things about online education, is that you can take the artificial mechanisms of online education, and you can, you can stretch an experience like this over an extended period of time, right? It's not a three-day deal anymore. So you're giving teachers time back, and you're helping people work through a system and a structure in a professional learning community that gets to an outcome, gives them an opportunity to use and it, to use tools before they actually actually engage it in real life. So getting comfortable with it. So the whole thing is really about supporting the teachers in this space, helping them understand how to use OER, giving them experience in using OER before they actually have to go and, and, and do the dirty work of getting it into their into their traditional classrooms. Okay? Um, and once they're there, though, and they have that experience, that's the beauty of the community, right? They can report back on the good, the bad, the ugly, and, and, and really help people grow, okay? So that's the idea, right? We're at the very beginning steps of it, um, and um, I'm here for feedback because this is my first OER experience, 
and you, the professionals. Any thoughts, criticisms, concerns? So, what what would drive a teacher to want to use this? Like you mentioned, I think is it the collaborative statistics book that you're using, or you have one OER book? Why would I say if I were a teacher at a in Boston want to come? What would really motivate me? Do I have to, or is it an optional thing? No, it's all it's all optional. Okay, okay. And, it, and, it, and and that's that's the point of really the community, right? Is this, is and and the reason why what, what our focus is is. Is, is goes beyond just the use of OER, but really about mission, really. Um, and so what we're, when we talk about that community, we're talking about um, uh, you know, the, the early studies that we've done in the community. Okay? So we've, we've introduced it to folks and we you know, put it back out to folks and said, what did you like about it? And the three things they liked about it were the directories. In other words, I can look up people, right? Um, because they know they trust. Again, it's like, it's, that's a collegial nature thing that I was talking about. The groups, I can be with people of common interest. And then the third piece was that content piece that I showed you. So those are the three things that vetted content piece. They want to engage, they just don't know how. So again, we're, what our focus is, by focusing on mission, rather than just you know, a kind of an open platform for uh, science teachers, for instance, um, you know, what, what we believe we're creating here is a space that people will find to be of, of unique value to them as Jesuit educators that gives them the freedom and opportunity to engage who we are in other resources. Make sense? Yeah. I'm just wondering what kind of um, processes you use for evaluating all this. So in terms of the personal development of the teachers, you know, in terms of the use of the system by students and so on. Is that something that you're giving much thought to at the moment? Mm, not a ton. You know, as you might, as you might have guessed, I'm kind of one of those guys. Um, I'm, I'm, an, I'm more on the action side of things. On the back end of the connection, I mean, on the back end of all of the systems, I mean, there's, there's deep analytics. Okay, so I can, uh, you know, the reporting mechanisms on, on usage of the content pieces versus the group pages, all those things. That, I mean, there's a whole analytical side to who's accessing what, how are they using it. Though all those structures are in place. Okay. Um, but what we're really trying to do in terms of, this, in, in terms of these early stages is, is engagement. And once we kind of build on that engagement and we get people attached, then it really becomes, okay, now, uh, particularly when it comes to the vetting pieces, right, where we really talk about, um, uh, you know, who's got what, how are we using things, and how, how does it get lensed, how does it, how does it get the appropriate lens of the Jesuit Virtual Learning Academy, that's really for uh, the people in, in those various groups to kind of make those decisions and kind of come up with a rubric. Is that helpful? Yeah, um, I, I mean, think, I'm thinking also at just a more informal level. It doesn't have to be metrics, it doesn't have to be about, you know, hits, if you like. It mm -hmm. can just be, you know, do the teachers like it? Do they want to do this? <laughs> right. development rubric, you know, do, or do they think it is a bit of a chore? Well, um, those are good questions, and, and, and we, have po we, have, we have polling mechanisms built in, and again, what I, one of the things I think I mentioned was is I did introduce this over the last couple of weeks to, um, to our schools to say, now, what do you think of it, what are the, and, and, I mean, and, and the scale was basically had four choices from um, it's really good um, in, you know, for, in these particular instances, these are the things I really like about it, these are the things that, you know, they're okay. These are the things I should, still don't know about. These are things I hate, you know. And basically, everything has been on the far left at this point. But you know, we won't know until we get people, in, you know, engaged in it further, right? And that's the work of the group. That's why we have those four people attached to it to kind of help move it forward. Is that helpful? Thank you. It looks like a sign.